Hey, what is up everyone? This is Burka here, and I'm here to do a tutorial for this cool program I found called Minimator, which is basically a simple 3D animation tool based off of the popular indie game known as Minecraft. So today I'm just going to kind of show you all the basics and maybe teach you a thing or two about this really interesting and cool program. So to start off here, I guess I will um, kind of tell you what these buttons up here do. So this is what you click if you want to make a new animation, basically a new save. Or uh, you can open an existing animation like, I guess I'll show you one at the end, because I have a few I've made. This is how you save your animation. Obviously you want to save as if it's a new file, but if you save if you're halfway through, I just told you what save as is, so you don't need to know. Uh, export as a movie, which you can export to do editing and add sounds and maybe a movie program you have. Uh, export as a screenshot, which is basically, yeah, you take a PNG of, of your uh, your current, whatever you're, I guess, recording on the, um, the actual canvas. And then down here, you can open up a project folder, which I actually don't really know what that does. I haven't really touched on that yet myself, but whatever. I guess maybe one day I'll actually figure out what that does. But uh, for now, I guess, let's get on with whatever else we have here. This is how you play your animation. I don't have anything on here, so I can't do anything. Uh, toggle looping, I don't really know what that does either. Toggle, or uh, tempo is basically how fast it plays the frames. So 30 is uh, regular speed, but that's actually quite fast. So I usually tune it down a little bit. Camera timeline, again, I'm stupid. I don't know what it does. But, uh, oh! Actually, I do know what it does. It lets you create camera angles. Sorry, I'll I'll get into that later, though. I just had a weird moment there. And that is undo, and that is undo the last undo, which is kind of undo of the undo, which is a bit, I guess, Inception-like, if you will. Uh, toggle help, which is basically just a help button, and visit the website to learn more about it. So, as you can see, we kind of have a, uh, a regular blank canvas here. So, how do you move around it? You use the... You try using the WASDF and it doesn't do anything. Uh, what you basically have to do is you got to right click on your your uh, your mouse and your then you're able to use the WASD to move around. So it's pretty uh, it's pretty simple I guess in that regard to move around. Just hold down the right and you'll be able to move anywhere. So now let's get to input or uh, putting in a 3D model of a Minecraft character. So basically what you're supposed to do, it'll look like this right at the start. So on the right side, what you want to do is you want to click the little play arrow on characters. And it'll bring down this little menu. To add a character, you go to add, which is simple enough. And then as you can see, where is Steve? Here is Steve. As you can see, he's just a uh, regular Minecraft character. Nothing really different about him. What you can do with this character actually in the, uh, the menu itself is you can change it to a different... Um, a different, I guess, model like the Enderman. What else we got here? We got a Iron Golem. We have a an Ocelot and a Creeper. So that's it's pretty easy to do, I guess. Let's change it back to Steve just for the video sake. So here we got basic Steve, you know, nothing special about him. You're probably wondering how do you change his skin, let's say if you want to make an intro for your YouTube channel, which I'm actually working on one, but it won't be done for a little while. Uh, anyways, what you want to do is you want to go over to where skin is, and you want to go to browse. Now, what you want to do with your skin is basically put it in your, uh, there's actually a folder it downloads into, which has the Minimator EXE in it, and you could just put it in there, which you can access from, obviously, in-game. So I guess what I'll do, I don't think, a lot of these don't really work for some reason, so I guess I'll put Herschel in for no apparent reason. Well, there's, uh, there's Herschel looking all badass. He's got no infinite ammo shotgun, sadly, so won't be shooting that anytime soon. But anyways, let's get to, uh, let's actually check out some of the other, I guess, tools you can use. So close that up and go to background, which background you can change basically the, um, the skyline. As it says, it's regular blue. What you want to do is you want to go to background color if you want to change it to, let's say, a hellish red or a lemon yellow, which that actually looks very uh, not Walking Dead-esque, I'll tell you that much. It doesn't look very 
pleasing to the eye. So I'll, I'll go back to blue just again for the video, video's sake. All right, there we go. And uh, what is this? I guess you could change the ground to whatever you want so you can make it sand or... I thought it said aluminum, adminium. Hmm. Huh. Another rack. Or if you want to kill your character, lava. Hmm. I like that. That's cool. All right, let's head to uh, lighting, which actually, you know, I'll get to lighting at the end if I have time for it. Uh, objects, which this allows you to add objects from the Minecraft universe into your actual map. So actually, what I'm going to do, change it back to, actually, I'll make it sand, because I like what sand looks like. Close that up, and now what you want to do is you want to go to add, same as the character. And from here, what you can do is uh, you can name the object, because it's uh, once you spawn it in, it'll appear down on your keyframe area down here. Uh, also, from here, you can change what the block would be, which, just to tell you, to change the block, you got to move this thing. I didn't know that, so I tried changing all that stuff down there, and it doesn't doesn't work. Uh, yeah, so that's items. It'll create a 3D, 3D item for you, like a bow or a sword. We'll get, we, uh, I'll spawn something in a sec so, so I can show you something, but... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Um, you can spawn in scenery, which scenery is basically like a house or something. You go to schematics, and from here you can put in a, uh, you know, just something from here. Like, let's put in a, uh, let's put in a Swedish ship. No point of this. Let's just let it load in here, because it takes a little while to actually get the full schematic. Oh. What's happening here? I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit confused here. Oh. Wow. All right then. So here we spawned in a ship. Pretty cool, I will admit. I like how it's also Swedish. That's pretty awesome. All right, let's. Um, I'm actually, I'm gonna go to items again, and I'm gonna show you how. If you, this is just like I found this hard to find out myself, but if you want to put the item in the person's actual hand, what you want to do is actually, we'll obviously get your item. I'm gonna make it a. Uh, I'll make it a diamond sword. And what you want to do is go down here. I like to click on every single one at the like uh, put a keyframe at the very front here, just so it has its original placing. Something I personally like to do. You don't have to do it, but if you want to place it, this is um, that's what you want to do. And uh, I guess actually before I do that, I will show you your average way to move the character. So to move him, basically, we will need these two play buttons on the right side, which is position. Oh, actually, oh, crap. Oh, crap. All right, and rotation. Uh, as you can see, I, I've selected all the body parts. To select a single one, all you have to do is click on it. So, very simple, you know. You can just click on any body part. If you want to click it all, just click right off the body. And from here, what you can do is these are your axes to move him around. Basically, the X and the Y is to move him on the actual, the actual like, ground. Uh, Z and... X and Z is to move them up and down, which can come in handy every time, or not every time, but time and time again. I'm sorry, I'm very, um, I'm in a very, can't speak much, because I'm, I'm not feeling it, but whatever, let's uh, move on here. And the Y and Z is, it's kind of like, you can move up and down while you move them. I don't, I prefer just to use the, uh, these two, but then again, personal preference. Uh, and let's get to, uh, before, I guess... I get to 10 minutes, I will show you how to rotate stuff. And in the next episode, I'll also do keyframing and how to actually move the character. So from here, if you want to move his arm, let's click on an arm here. And what you can do is, on the rotation, you can actually rotate physically the body part. So um, I can rotate him, obviously, up and down if I use this one. Put it back to zero. With this one, I can move it kind of... I guess side to side, which can come in handy occasionally. Um, and I think this one, what does this one do? Oh, it just kind of moves the uh, moves the hand. So again, can come in handy every now and then. Uh, and as I, I guess my time limit's coming up here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into two parts, just because it does take a bit of time to actually get a, get through everything in this program, which is actually quite a simple program. So I guess next time I will show you how to do keyframing, animation, put stuff in the character's hands, and some other stuff, alright?
I will, I guess, do that in the next one and see you guys 